Hello all. So we are here with the first episode of our placement series. So as a part of this show, we'll be bringing in various qualified chart accountants from different work profiles to acquaint the new budding chart accountants with the various profiles that a CA has after qualification. So here we are with the first episode. We have Divesh Harpalani, who is an All India anchor in both CA Inter as well as CA Final, and is currently working as an associate consultant in Bain and Company. So here we are to have this interview and understand the work profile with respect to management consulting. Hello, Divesh. Thank you so much for accepting the invite. Thanks for your time as well. Hope you're doing great. Yes, Chetanya, I'm doing great. Hope the same about you. And uh, uh, thanks, thanks a lot to you for inviting me to the channel. Yeah. So let's get started with uh, the session. So. So basically, as a chart accountant, uh, you have actually taken up a different role. Uh, this is not a traditional, an audit or a tax role. So this is a role which is more fit for MBAs than CAs. So uh, why consulting as a career, though this is not an exclusive CA role? So any reason behind choosing? Uh, right. Uh, a very good question. In fact, uh, I would say, see, one thing I would say, I was not, say, from day one very clear or uh, very, did not have a clear line of sight about uh, me uh, ending up in consulting per se. Uh, but once you clear, you certainly see plethora of opportunities in front of you, whether it is uh, in terms of the industry uh, or in terms of various uh, CA roles in big four um, or say something like a consulting. And it's about um, you uh, making a choice between all of them. Certainly there, there are a lot of aspects uh, that that you need to consider while making this choice one of the main aspects at my case was uh, i did want to explore uh, something apart from uh, traditional tax and audit not to say that that is something that i did not want to go for but i would say having explored uh, the tax domain back in my article ship uh, i thought of uh, going for something new uh, after uh, after actually qualifying and um, so that way big four is something that uh, I mean, I, I know there, there are a lot many other fields as well within Big Four, whether it is in terms of the uh, management consulting at Big Four or the uh, financial due diligence or other practices. But uh, I did uh, think of giving a shot at something else. So my choice was between industry and consulting. And um, I did have a word with a lot of my seniors and a lot of the people I uh, knew. Uh, and all of them had a single, a single, uh, single opinion. Uh, that uh, I should go for consulting mainly because of the reason that this is a uh, golden opportunity for someone uh, uh, who is getting into it uh, without an MBA. So that was one of the major reasons. And I thought, obviously, uh, I will know if I, I will not know if I am fit for consulting unless and until I really end up uh, working in consulting. So I thought, uh, yes, it's about uh, us experimenting at the end of the day. So I thought, why not uh, go for it uh, given the fact that it's it's a good chance? And obviously, it's well known that uh, consulting does. Uh, have uh, both good pay and good exit opportunities. So considering all of these factors, I did thought of uh, uh, giving it a shot. Great. It's actually good that a CA is now competing with other professions as well. You're not uh, centering ourselves into our traditional roles. It's actually good to venture out and learn others as well. So I just want to understand the what is the work profile generally, like what is the sort of work that we'll be doing in a, in a consultant role and how has been your experience? Um, so if I'm to put it this way, to put it like very simply and plainly, uh, management consulting is actually about solving business problems. Uh, it, it's not about a particular domain, say either as tax or uh, audit or about uh, say financial due diligence or about there being a particular uh, technical expertise. There is no particular technical expertise uh, that we are solving for. Um, management consulting is all about solving business problems. Uh, could be as uh, I mean, could be as naive as probably uh, deciding a name for a brand, and could be uh, you know as as big as deciding whether or not a company should enter uh, into a particular market with a particular product or not. So there could be various questions or problems that a business might have. Uh, say for example, a business wants to increase uh, its sales or enter in uh, and venture into new geographies or uh, anything of that sort. Uh, so the management consultants usually usually are meant to solve these problems. And how has my experience been so far? I would say, uh, you know, uh, two months is, is actually not too big a time to uh, really comment on this. But uh, like I said, uh, uh, much against uh, something like a tax and audit, uh, 
management consulting is really very dynamic because no two problems are the same every client has a different uh, problem and that way you get to work on a plethora of problems and that way you uh, really gain uh, diverse knowledge working with certainly uh, people who hail from uh, top tier mba uh, b schools uh, from india and from abroad so that way yeah, it is it is i would say um, at one end it is very dynamic and challenging as well because of the working hours but then at the same time the learning is immense under so you get to explore various fields instead of sticking yourself to a particular industry or something great it was great uh, actually either be it big four or any of the chart account the form generally the interviews are centered around accounting standards tax provisions so the interviews are more theoretical or more based on a technical skills but i think uh, consulting interviews are not in the same way so can just let us know what are the skills that you additionally required with respect to a consulting interview and how a consulting interview is different from the traditional chart accountant interviews that we face right so first things first i will say it is certainly totally totally different from the uh, normal interviews i mean of the other interviews that you go for whether industry or uh, within the ca practice uh, uh, most of the questions would either revolve around the work that you did back in your articleship or uh, they will test you around your conceptual uh, knowledge uh, around the concepts that you learned back then in your ca curriculum much against that uh, none of this is actually tested uh, in in the consulting interviews so consulting interviews are totally different i mean there would be say three or four rounds of interviews and each of them would be a case study uh, based round so i'll give you an example of a case study say uh, the, the the case problem would be say if you are the interview and i am the interviewer uh, my question to you would be say a german a german car manufacturer wants to venture into uh, the indian market and uh, it it has come to you to uh, your advice as to whether or not it should actually enter the market and this would be a one line problem statement and you are supposed to actually uh, you know a counter question me as an interviewer and uh, say the counter questions could be how big is the manufacturer uh, how well known is it back in germany what is it its purpose of coming to india uh, what what types of cars is it manufacturing is it manufacturing sedan cars or suv cars i mean there will be a list of long questions that you will go on and asking ask me to reach to the final answer that you will have so what is more important is the approach of reaching the answer that is the structural thinking is what they uh, test you at your end and uh, not really the answer is what uh, finally matters and i'll uh, say in terms of the skill set again like i said uh, technical skills is not really something uh, that is really sought after i would say soft skills uh, uh, and, and structural thinking basically your your thinking ability your problem solving ability your analytical skills is something that is really tested and apart from that obviously you need to be very good at communication and uh, the way of presenting uh, uh, the thoughts of your of your mind to them so i mean i would say soft skills is something uh, that is very relevant so uh, how was your interview uh, process and the preparation can you just let us know the sources from where you had prepared for the interview right so i would say no matter how much you prepare the case study that you will get uh, in the interview certainly going to be uh, something that you've not not come across before so uh, the, you cannot really at the end of the day it's all about your presence of mind uh, during that half an hour of interview but yes you certainly can prepare uh, i mean go through different case studies practice different case studies uh, to understand how to develop that approach and develop that structural thinking for that there are few sources few books like uh, one of them is a uh, case interview crack uh second is um, say i am amdabad's uh, case study booklet wherein uh, the the there's a list of all those case studies that were actually asked in the interviews uh, in the campus so you get to go through all of those case studies you will have a fair idea of how are such case study given the fact that we've not uh, faced such interviews uh, uh, any time yeah. uh, till now and there are obviously youtube channels uh, wherein there are mock interviews uh, put on uh, youtube so you can always go through those interviews and explore and usually the preparation phase does not uh, revolve around you simply going and reading a particular case study it's about you practicing it so if if, if say for example two of us are shortlisted uh, i will uh, at one end uh, ask you if i will be the interviewer uh, you being the interview and the other way around you can be the interviewer and i will be the interview so that's how we used to like practice uh, the case studies um, that that was basically the preparation phase so a consultant role so here in this consult so if you take audit or tax uh, we are monopoly so there is no the choice for recruiters other than taking up a ca but in terms of consulting uh, we have to compete with mba as well so what's your take on the difference between a chart account and mba or uh, do they have an upper hand over us in this domain uh, i would say given the fact that you mentioned in this domain certainly yes 
and there's a reason i would say so i don't really feel that uh, cas are less intelligent in any way than i than either mbas or other uh, fields but when you specify this domain uh, that that obviously is a bit of difference and i'll tell you why the difference uh, we're talking about mbas coming from top tier b schools over here because those are the ones who get into the top management consulting firms and in these b schools their entire curriculum uh, revolves around uh, say problem solving or the presentation part of it uh, solving case studies etc so they are uh, uh, through the entire tenure of their mba they are taught all of this so their curriculum revolves around all of this much against that our curriculum revolves more so around uh, the technical aspect of things uh, you know like i said knowing bd provisions or idt provisions yeah. so we are not taught to uh, probably i would say uh, make presentations or solve general business problems so we are taught to solve say tax related problems uh, etc but uh, those are not the guys that we are trained for having said that uh yes they do have an upper edge but then that doesn't really mean that uh, we are not uh, probably as good as them and i have my own logic to say this because what you are comparing is actually the top tier b schools versus uh, cas in general uh i mean out of all the uh, people who are going through mbas that those going for top tier b schools would be hardly 2% or 1% or whatever so that way you should also at the same time consider that top 1% uh, uh cas and when i say top 1% cas i don't mean rankers per se uh, what i'm trying to say is when i say top 1% cas i mean in terms of uh, the top skills or the skills that are relevant so when you consider a like to like comparison i would say certainly uh, cas are probably as good as mbas with the only difference that uh, yes uh, they this is something that is specifically taught to them in their curriculum while uh, that is not the case with uh, a chartered accountants so oh, actually if you see currently people take up jobs have these aspects in mind which is money growth and work life balance so work life balance has started playing a very big role so people have started declining jobs which pay huge money or just because they don't have proper work life balance so how is this balance in consulting domain um you know being very frank honest and to the point uh, it's it's not as good i mean I'm talking about consulting in general yes work life uh, balance is a very difficult it's very difficult to maintain and the working hours are strenuous uh but then as a matter of fact i would say there are three things that you have to choose from uh, it is growth money and uh, your work life but i would say you can get only two of these three so you will certainly have to make or set priorities uh, and uh, what, what is it that you want to achieve in your life and decide accordingly again having said that uh, yes work life balance is a very difficult is it really difficult to maintain but then again it's not that it's not manageable it is manageable because people have been doing it uh and if people have been able to uh, certainly even you can so considering that fact i think it's more of a personal choice but broadly speaking uh consulting does have uh, strenuous working hours understood so uh, seeing your profile you have been a ranker in both inter and final and you have been into a regular college bcom you are active public speaker and you like traveling to places so so i think you do a lot of networking so and you like meeting different kind of people so how important do you think is networking for a chartered accountant i feel it is extremely important not just for a chartered accountant but for any profession and not just for any professional for any businessman for like each and every person networking is very important in different ways i mean i cannot really uh, give you very good examples uh, but let me put it very simply i mean i know you uh, because somehow we like network right so that that's how i'm here for this interview so what happens is uh, you never know how uh, a person might uh, you know uh, might be of help to you at any point of time even otherwise when you meet so many people you get to learn so many uh, good good points about each and every person because every single person is unique in his or her own way yeah. so having networked with so many people you get to learn uh, good things uh, from each and every person that you meet and it's always good to meet people because the more you meet uh, you groom your personality better develop your communication skills as well uh, become extrovert is what i would say so yeah it is certainly helpful and like i said it's not just for a chartered accountant for everyone but specifically also for chartered accountants given the fact that uh, uh, we have uh, a correspondence course that we go for and yeah. that way we don't get as much chance to network uh, oh, beyond our article chip form great great understood so thank you devesh it was great interacting with you i think your viewers have got a very good insight on this a new profession actually for chartered accountants that is consulting so i wish you all the best for all your future endeavors again thank you so much for accepting my invite thank you
Thanks, Thanks a lot for inviting me here and all the best to your viewers as well. Thank you. Thank you so much.